Yes, thank you, Jaden. Um, yeah, if you don't know me, my name's Levi. I'm sitting on that stool over there. Uh, no, but yeah, we're going to jump right in um, to my section. So as Jaden uh, had mentioned and had been talking about the holiness and righteousness of God, um, I'm kind of going to be contrasting that, um, talking about mankind, uh, humankind, and how we are corrupt, uh, sinful, and unrighteous, which are pretty much all just fancy words of saying not good. Um, and so our main text is going to be in Romans 3, but we're going to start out in Genesis chapter 3. So if you want to, you can turn to your Bibles in uh, Genesis chapter 3. Um, <clears throat> so the two main questions um, that we're kind of going to answer are how and kind of why are we so sinful um, and why is it important to know that? So starting in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, this is after creation, um, and God is with um, Adam and Eve in the garden, um, and the serpent is there. So starting in chapter 3, verse 1, it says this, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may, eat, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat of it or touch it or you will die. No, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then, there, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. And so here we see um, in this story that the serpent deceived the woman, leading the woman to directly disobey uh, what God had said, um, and then leads the man to directly disobey um, what God has said as well. In verse um, 17 of chapter 2, God says, But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for on that day you eat of it, you will surely die. And so, right, that's directly saying for them what not to do, and both Adam and Eve did exactly that. And the serpent made a desire for them to sin. And so man disobeyed, which then in turn created a sinful desire. And so we see in this Genesis 3 kind of situation here, Adam and Eve doubt God's word um, and what he said. Um, and then the serpent leads them to distorting what God said. Uh, as, you, as we can see in verse, verse 1, as a serpent, holy cow, my Bible is like going crazy. There we go. <laughs> verse 1 as the serpent is talking to them, he tells Eve, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? Which is funny because the serpent already lied there and that's not what God said at all. In, in, verse, or in chapter two, God says um, in verse 16, the Lord commanded them, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so um, this is already not true in saying that God had placed so many trees out there, but he just said, don't eat from this one tree. Uh, and so there were many options, but again, both Adam and Eve directly disobeyed um, and ate from the fruit. So then we're going to jump to Romans 3, the New Testament, and kind of see how this relates to us and where we are at. So Romans chapter 3, I need to turn there as well. At the beginning of this chapter, Paul is talking about um, and answer this, answers the question, does our unfaithfulness as man, kind of as Jaden said, our unfaithfulness to God, nullify God's faithfulness? And if we, live, uh, if we live in unrighteousness, does that highlight God's righteousness? And the answer to that is no. Um, but we're going to learn why. So chapter 3, verses 9 through 20, I'll read those right now. It says this, what then? Are we any better off? Not at all. 
For we have directly charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, and there is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. All alike have become worthless. There is no one who does what is good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They deceive with their tongues. Viper's venom is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and wretchedness are in their paths, and the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are subject to the law, so that every mouth may be shut at the whole world, and the whole world may become subject to God's judgment. For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. And so Paul, in, this, in these sections verse, from verse 9 and to 18, is referencing Psalm 14, which is pretty much word for word of what he says. And he's pretty much getting at that no one is righteous, right? Every person has sinned, and we have all turned away from the God. That says in verse, verse 12, it says, all have turned away. And so what that means, sin is anything that goes against God, and we all have made a choice to do exactly that, to go against God. And so my first point here is kind of, if you're taking notes, writing down anything, or just remember and follow along, is we have turned away from God. And so every person has made a decision to turn away um, and to not follow, to go against God. And so you and every, every person in this room, I have sinned, which means we have turned away from the Lord. And there's, there was a moment in time um, or frankly, many moments in times where um, we have followed our own desire, turned away from our creator's desire, um, and turned to own sinful desire and turned against him. In Romans um, 5, verse 12, it says, um, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way, death spread to all people because all sinned. And so just like Adam and Eve directly disobeyed God, um, we have done the same. We have directly disobeyed God and sinned against him. Now, whether we know it or not, um, we have, and, and I have too. <laughs> and so um, each one of us has taken a bite out of that fruit, right? Not literally. We haven't all literally taken a bite. We weren't there. But we've taken a bite out of the fruit of sin, um, which could be many different things, lying, stealing, having lustful desires, having anger, anything that goes against what God desires for us um, and has intended for us. And it's not because of God that we sin, but because of us and because of our unrighteousness and our desire, our sinful desire. And so our sin separates us from God. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not listen. And so our sins have created this separation from us and God because God, as Jaden was talking about, is holy and righteous and perfect. And we are not. We fall short of the standard that God has for us. Um, you might have heard of the analogy of having like a glass or a cup of water and you put um, like food coloring in the, like one drop of food coloring and it will change the whole glass of water, the color, right? If you put blue food coloring just in clear water, the whole glass becomes blue. And that's what sin does to our lives. Even just one sin corrupts us and makes us unrighteous before God. And so we all have fallen short. And so what we deserve is death. And this is pretty a heavy truth um, and kind of a, a weighty reality here. Um, in Romans, um, in the later chapters, it says, um, the wages of sin is death. And so, right, we have, <clears throat> we have earned death because of what we have done. Since we have each sinned, we have earned death and fallen short of God's perfect standard. And so, what is our response and what is our hope? And so I know I'm kind of leaving it on a low note, but thankfully Cole is able to come and tell us about what is our hope and what is our response knowing of our sin that we have fallen short um, from God's perfect 
standard. And so I'm going to invite Cole up as he shares with our response um, and kind of closes our night out.